If biochar were truly the miracle fix it's marketed to be, your soil problems would already be gone, yet here you are, still fighting poor growth, weak roots, and disappointing harvests. That disconnect is exactly where this conversation needs to begin, because what's being sold today as a revolutionary garden upgrade is, in many cases, an incomplete truth wrapped in ancient credibility and modern hype. Welcome back to Crop Corner, where we don't repeat trends, we test them. And today, we're pulling back the curtain on biochar, why it's being pushed so hard, what garden experts conveniently leave out, and how this ancient material actually worked long before it was bagged, branded, and marked up. Why biochar exploded in modern gardening. Biochar didn't start as a product, it started as a byproduct. Indigenous farming systems discovered centuries ago that charcoal remnants mixed with organic waste created long-lasting fertile soil. That discovery was later branded, industrialized and marketed as a soil amendment that promises better drainage, higher nutrient retention, microbial explosion, and permanent soil improvement. On paper, it sounds unbeatable. In practice it often disappoints because the context has been stripped away. Modern biochar is usually produced in high-heat, oxygen-limited environments crushed packaged and sold dry. What's missing is the biological preparation that made ancient charcoal soil so powerful. Without that preparation, biochar behaves very differently than advertised. Here's the uncomfortable reality most garden channels avoid saying clearly. Fresh, uncharged biochar does not feed plants. In fact, it actually does the opposite at first. Biochar is extremely porous, which means it acts like a sponge. When you add it directly to soil, it immediately begins absorbing nutrients, moisture, and microbial life from the surrounding environment. That nutrient drawdown can uh, stunt plant growth for weeks or even months. Gardeners often report yellowing leaves, slow growth, and weak root development after adding biochar, especially in beds that were already low in organic matter. That's not user error. That's chemistry. Biochar has no nutritional value on its own. It is a storage medium, not a fertilizer. Ancient farmers never used biochar alone. The original success of charcoal-rich soils came from a process, not a product. Ancient growers mixed charcoal with food scraps, animal manure, ash, urine, compost, and decomposing plant matter for long periods before it ever touched crops. The charcoal was fully saturated with nutrients and microbes before being applied to fields. Modern biochar skips that step entirely. You're sold the skeleton without the life. That's why so many gardeners swear by biochar, while just as many quietly abandon it after poor results. Both experiences can be true, depending on preparation. Why garden experts don't emphasize the risks Biochar has become a content darling because it sounds scientific, ancient, and permanent. It photographs well, tests well in lab conditions, and fits neatly into sustainability narratives. What doesn't get clicks is explaining that biochar can temporarily damage soil biology if misused, or that compost alone often outperforms biochar in real gardens. There's also an economic incentive. Biochar is a sellable input. Compost is often homemade, worm castings can be produced on site, leaf mold costs nothing. When advice leans toward products over processes, skepticism is healthy. Biochar is not useless. It really is context dependent. In sandy soils with heavy rainfall, properly charged biochar can improve nutrient holding capacity. In tropical or highly leached soils, it can contribute to long-term stability, and, in container gardening, it can help manage moisture when blended correctly. But in rich garden beds already full of organic matter, compost and microbial life, biochar rarely adds measurable benefit. In some cases, it actually interferes with the balance you've already built. The only way to use biochar correctly well, if you're going to use biochar, it must be charged, that means saturating it with nutrients and microbes before application. Anything less is really just gambling with your soil health. A reliable charging formula starts with one part biochar, by volume. For every gallon of dry biochar, mix it with one gallon of finished compost or worm castings. Add one tablespoon of unsulfured molasses to one gallon of water, and pour that entire gallon over the mixture. 
Stir thoroughly until it's evenly moist, not dripping. Cover loosely and let it sit for a minimum of two weeks, ideally four, turning it every few days. This allows microbial colonization and nutrient saturation. Only after this process should biochar be added to soil, and even then at no more than 5% of total soil volume. Why compost still outperforms biochar? Compost doesn't need activation, it doesn't steal nutrients before giving them back, it feeds plants, microbes, fungi, and soil structure immediately. Compost improves aggregation, water retention, drainage, and nutrient cycling without delay. Biochar can enhance compost over time, but it cannot replace it. If your garden struggles the answer is almost never adding something inert, the answer is feeding life. The Marketing Myth of Permanence One of the biggest selling points of biochar is that it lasts hundreds or even thousands of years. That sounds impressive until you realize permanence doesn't equal productivity. A rock also lasts forever, but it doesn't grow tomatoes. Soil health is dynamic. It thrives on inputs, decay, and renewal. Long-term carbon storage has value for climate conversations, but gardeners need seasonal performance. Yield, resilience, and soil life matter more than theoretical longevity. What most gardeners actually need instead. Before buying biochar, most gardens would see better results from deeper mulching, more diverse compost inputs, reduced tillage, and consistent moisture management. These practices rebuild soil faster and more reliably than any bagged amendment. If your soil lacks structure, organic matter fixes that. If it lacks nutrients, compost and slow-release amendments work immediately. If it lacks microbes, compost teas and undisturbed soil help more than charcoal ever will. The ancient truth worth keeping. Well, the real lesson from ancient soil systems isn't biochar itself. It's integration, nothing worked alone, everything was layered, fermented, decomposed and reused. Modern gardening struggles when we isolate one component and expect it to perform miracles. Biochar was never magic, it was one supporting actor in a complex system, when stripped of that system it becomes a gamble. Final thoughts from Crop Corner if you've used biochar successfully, that doesn't mean the warnings are false, it means you likely charged it properly or had rich soil to buffer its effects, if you tried it and failed, you didn't do anything wrong, you were sold an incomplete story. Gardening isn't about chasing trends, it's about understanding processes, and the more you focus on feeding soil life instead of soil products, the more consistent your results will be. If this breakdown saved you time, money, or frustration, make sure you subscribe to Crop Corner, share this with a fellow gardener who's about to buy their first bag of biochar, and stay grounded in methods that actually grow food.